everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. It's Wednesday. It is it Wednesday. Is Wednesday. Yeah. Woohoo! And um, we're on break, so we're like, oh, let's do Bible study. Wednesday, so, the 29th. Already. It's crazy. The month went by fast. It has really gone by fast. It's time busy, goes. I guess. Time goes really fast. Well, let's tag everybody real quick. Well, we are super, super excited because we're starting a new book, you guys. That's right. We are in one, our first Corinthians. And um, it's so neat that we're just getting along so far. And we appreciate you guys hanging in with us because it's really a blessing. It's really cool. And as you know, I get really excited because when we start a new book, Rick lets me do the introductions. Which is totally awesome. Woohoo! So I have a really cool introduction because I didn't know all this stuff about Corinthians. I'm just giving you a spoiler alert. It's a bad place. I didn't know that. So, the letter is written to the church of Corinth, and it's written by Paul. And he starts this letter, or he started the letter while he was on his third missionary journey from Ephesus and had planned to winter there in Corinth. So he was planning on going there. And Corinth is located in the southern, or was, located in the southern Greece area. And it was heavily traveled by, um, this is neat, it was heavily um, traveled because the sailors, in order to go over to the other side would have to go a dangerous 250 mile voyage so the sailors the captains would actually carry their big ships on skids or rollers through the city of corinth wow so you can imagine how much people went through there because it's sailors and captains and boats and well, can you imagine seeing a big boat just come through your city so they were pulling it on on land on land wow. so instead of going around because it was too dangerous they would go over um on land ah which i can't, I can't imagine what that would be like it'd be crazy Hi, Mom. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Good morning. But so, yeah, they actually would carry their ships, their big ships on land, but go through Corinth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that would attract some sketchy people here and there because it's Definitely. not just because they're sailors, but because there's people coming in and out all the time. It's not normal people. Mm -hmm. And so, anyways. And I guess I would like be, <laughs> get like pirates and stuff. Yes. Stuff. Yeah. Oh. And it was a very prosperous city, too, probably because there was a lot of trade. <laughs> So Amazing. that all adds to where the bad stuff comes from. But so Corinth also, because it was so popular, it even hosted what was called the Isthmian, Is, like Isthmian Games, which is like the Olympics, and um, which I thought that was very interesting. And it was a famous athletic event. Hmm. Um, but because, unfortunately, Corinth is so popular, it also became so morally corrupt. And its name actually became synon synonymous with debauchery and moral depravity. Wow. Like if you said you wanted, to, you were going to go get drunk, you would say you're going to go get a Corinthian. Uh, Isn't that wild? That's crazy. So that's a really bad name. And so anyways, in his letter, Paul is listing some of those specific sins that he's trying to help them correct and get back on track. And sadly, some of the worst sins that happened in that area were done by the church. Our people, not the church, but people in the church. Uh -huh. um, because remember, men are just men at best. Um, and some of those sins, the worst ones, was of incest. And a lot of that happened in the church. Wow. And um, what's funny is even the, gen the pagan Gentiles condemned incest, but the church was doing some of it. Mm. So Paul was trying to get them corrected. So a lot of the letter, which you're reading, is him correcting the church. Wow. It's almost like a Sodom and Gomorrah, which is wild. That is wild. And then here's another bad thing. In Corinth, they even had a temple to the Greek goddess of love, Aphrodite. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Aphrodite. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. So she, they had a, they had a lot of idols there too, and some. Listen to this one. Some one thousand priestesses, really prostitutes, wow. were religious. They were religious prostitutes. They lived and worked there, and they would come down into the city at night and offer their services. So by day they worked at the church as prostitutes, and then at night go to the city and be prostitutes. <laughs> Not awful. That's crazy. I didn't know that about this place. And then the church in Corinth was founded by Paul, and unfortunately, most of the Jews there resisted the gospel. But he was there for like a year and a half and before he left, and many people got converted, which is so cool because, remember, Paul used to go after and persecute Christians. So yeah. he did a lot of really cool things. Um, but he was able to include uh, convert the leader of the synagogue. His name is Crispus, and then his family, too. And you That's guys probably cool remember that Crispus name Crispus. from some other stories. I like that. But I think it's neat, though, how much Paul got to do um, while he was there. But it's an awful place. So Paul's writing that letter to help get them on track. And then the last part, the church of <laughs> Corinth struggled to break from its local culture and worldliness. Even inside the church, there were separate. So they started turning into groups. So, like, um, 
because you know that worldliness was so much there it started corrupting the church it never really left so there's some people that were into idols some people that were into the incest and pre the prostitutes and then some that were following jesus's way so there was lots of little sex within that church mm. and so paul let, paul's letter is addressing that because you in trying to correct those errors because you'll hear him say um in his letter um, you know, get rid of those people of the church. So that's what he's talking about there. And so um, I'm going to post some stuff on our website, which is kind of cool. But one thing in particular is the map, because I always love the map, because it makes it more real life. Yeah. Because, you know, they showed a, a they had the a, a game like the Olympics there. They had the goddess uh, Aphrodite. And then this is actual stuff that archaeologists have found of what the place looked like. Let's see if I can get it to go on there. Yeah. So this is actually, let me get it closer. Like a drawing? It's a little one? sketch, fuzzy. But I will um, put this on the website so you guys can see it. But it's got like the theater and it's got the, um, the uh, place where they do worship the um, Aphrodite and all that stuff. So I just think it's neat because for all the people that always say, oh, the Bible's not real, uh, there's real stuff, there's real places, there's real everything, and so you can't dispute that, and that's what I like about it. That is pretty so cool. So it's kind of cool. It's interesting how those groups, <clears throat> groups would get in there and, and make their own cliques and yeah. stuff and things like that. It's crazy. That's but cool. I, I had no idea that Corinth was so bad. Hmm. I never really, I only thought Sodom and Gomorrah was that bad. Sounds so familiar, though. It's very scary. <laughs> so, it But that's the intro. I know it was kind of long. Do you have anything to add to? I know I took up a lot of time. Well, no, um, I have a little bit. I had, <clears throat> actually, I had notes and they, I don't know where they went uh, on my computer. But um, the uh, first part of First Corinthians chapter one also is about um, what you were talking about—the division. Mm -hmm. There was division in the church and things like that. I, not, I don't want to interrupt you, but is that your notes right in here? Um, no. Okay, sorry. They were actually in my notes, but oh. they, <laughs> I don't know what happened to them. Okay. But. Um, and I was going to post them on the website, too. Nice. So, but I'll, if I find them, I'll put them on there. But um, anyway, uh, so the divisions, you know, you hear uh, people say, I follow Paul. And Paul, actually, I don't know where he was at, but he may have been in prison. But Chloe, uh, Chloe's people, somebody came and told him about the division going on. And some were saying, I follow Paul, I follow Apollos, I follow Cephas, which Cephas is Peter, mm -hmm. and I follow Christ. <coughs> <coughs> That's those different groups. Those different groups, mm -hmm. yeah. And Paul, Paul says, was was Paul crucified for you, or was you baptized in the name of Paul? Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that was interesting. I do have one note in here left, I think, from St. Augustine. And um, I thought it was interesting. St. Augustine was talking about this, this verse here, and he says, For men who wish to be built upon men said, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Peter. But others who did not wish to be built on Peter... But on the rock said, I am of Christ. Yeah. And when the Apostle Paul um, ascertained that he was chosen and Christ despised, he said, is Christ divided? And then you see that Christ mm -hmm. is divided there. Was Paul crucified for you? Or was he baptized in the name of Paul? And if not in the name of Paul, neither in the name of Peter. Mm -hmm. Peter, but in the name of Christ, that Peter might be built upon the rock and not the rock upon Peter. Oh. And that's where we got to be. We're not built on Peter. We're not built on a pastor. We're not built on oh. a pope. We're not built on bishops. We're not built on all those things. We're built on Christ. That's deep. Because if it's the other way around, that means you're building Christ on men. May, yep. And you see that's how gonna men crumble. are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so Paul's trying to get him back to saying that, that um, you would get your... You want to be built on the foundation and teaching of Christ. That's important. And that's what these leaders should be doing, too. They're supposed to be teaching Christ. They're not supposed to be te teaching division. That's, that's interesting. That's, so. well, how, I mean, I can't believe they had actual prostitutes that worked at the church and then go down and prostitute down there. I mean, I'm sure it was a popular church. Yeah. <laughs> that's bad. Yeah. But, um, but, but it, that's a good point, though, because we should be built on the rock of Jesus, not the rock of man. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. an important point. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thanks, you guys. I'm excited to read this chapter, especially knowing the introduction. I think, at least for me, it helps me get a better grasp of it because, you know, each book of the Bible is is written to certain particular groups. So now we can understand if sometimes it sounds harsh, it's because this is a pretty bad area. He needs to be harsh. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds. It will be. And I love that intro because, thanks. I mean, just like you said, it's all, all letters are to certain churches. Yeah. So. so it'll be fun. Well, tomorrow we'll be here for Corinthians 2. Yep. And we'll see you then. Hope you enjoy. We love you. Love you. Bye. Thanks for joining us, Mom. Happy Bye. Lunch. Love you.